Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow Motivation. I'm back with another motivational moment video for you guys. Today, we're going to be talking about Joseph. And the title of this, um, this Bible study lesson is going to be, if I have to give it a title, Run, Run, Run. I have researched, studied this, read this, and found all the information that I can find on it. Since we're going to be talking about Joseph, uh, we're going to start out in Genesis uh, chapter 39. And I have the English version. Let's, let's get this pulled up here. Genesis 39. How's everybody doing today? God bless you all. Welcome back to the channel. It is always a pleasure to have you guys here. Everything is read out. This is a message that the Spirit had gave me. This is a seven-page message. Okay? A message. But uh, let's pull up Genesis 39 in here. We're going to talk about Joseph. And the reason I named this lesson, this Bible study, Run, 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 because sometimes we got to do like Joseph. We have to run, baby, run. You know, when the enemy come at us, throwing those darts, trying to kill, steal, and destroy us, we have to run. We have to pick up the pick up the cross and run. I got to move this out of the way. This is my thing for my death, but I need to move it because we need some run. Because we got to be flipping some pages and stuff. I have my water right here. Y'all see my banners beside me. If I was in the house, these would have been outside the house door. But I like it because it say, welcome home, sweet home. Welcome home, sweet home. Welcome into my humbly abode. So before we get started with this lesson, let's go ahead and get us a word of prayer right quick. And I just got through uh, showering and I washed my hair. Y'all see how my hair has grown? Those that know me know my hair has really grown Look at this. My hair was very, 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 very short. But let's say a word of prayer and get into this word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come and approach the throne of grace again. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for each and every member of our family. Thank you for our neighbors. Thank you for friends, co-workers, just everybody, Lord. And Father God, I just want to ask that you please forgive me for all of my sins. Anything that's in me that's not right or that's contrary to your word, I ask that you move it out right now in the name of Jesus. Remove anything that can hinder this word from being heard, from being uh, received, and being reached to your people. Father God, I just want to thank you for your word. And I ask that you put within me a spirit of discernment. I ask that you reveal the mysteries of your words to me and give me an understanding of your word. And Lord, I ask that you tame this tongue of mine and let me speak only your words, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So, in this particular lesson, this is when uh, Joseph was thrown into jail. And this is when uh, Popatar's wife, uh, had made advanced movement towards Joseph because, you know, Joseph had been uh, placed in a special position. So, and Joseph had to run, baby. He had to get away from that demon, that she demon. He had to get away from that demon. So, let's read. We're going to start at Genesis 39, chapter 30, Genesis chapter 39, in case somebody don't know what I'm talking about, uh, verses 6 through 15. It's the first one we're going to read. And it read as thus. Popitas left everything up to Joseph. And with Joseph there, the only decision he had to make was what he wanted to eat. Joseph was well built and he was handsome. And Popitas' wife soon noticed him. She asked him to make love to her. But he refused and said, my master isn't worried about anything in his house because he has placed me in charge of everything he owns. No one in my master's house is more important than I am. The only thing 
he hasn't given me is you. And that's because you are his wife. I won't sin against God by doing such terrible thing as this. She kept begging Joseph day after day, but he refused to do what she wanted or even go near her. One day, Joseph went to Papatar's house to do his work, and none of the other servants were there. Papatar's wife grabbed hold of his coat and said, make love to me. Joseph ran out of the house, leaving her hanging onto his coat. When this happened, she called in her servants and said, look, this Hebrew has just come, has come just to make fools of us. He tried to rape me, but I screamed for help. And when he heard me scream, he ran out of the house, leaving his coat with me. Papa Tal's wife kept Joseph coat until her husband came home. Then she said, that Hebrew slave of yours tried to rape me. But when I screamed for help, he left his coat and ran out of the house. Papa Tal, he was the king. He became very angry and threw Joseph in the same prison where the king's prisoners were kept. Oh, he wasn't a king. While Joseph was in prison, the Lord helped him and was good to him. He even made the jailer like Joseph so much that he put him in charge of the other prisoners. And of everything that was done in jail, the jailer did not worry about anything because the Lord was with Joseph and made him successful in all the land. Hallelujah. Now, it says the Ishmaelite took Joseph to Egypt and sold him to Papatah, the king official in charge of the palace guard. So Papatah was the king official, the king right-hand man that was in charge of the palace. When Joseph was sold, you know, his brother sold him. When he was sold as a slave, that's who he was sold to. So Papa Tom was over everything that the king had. He was the king right-hand man. And he had made Joseph uh, his right-hand man. So Joseph was in charge of everything that Papa Tom owned. Okay? But Joseph was a very good-looking man. Very handsome. Very good-looking. And Papa Tom's wife was lusting after him. Lusting, baby. When I say lusting... I mean lusting, you hear me? She was lusting after him. Bad, very bad. So Joseph said that he that, that, that Papa Ty had nothing to worry about. He said because he was not going to, to do that to him. He said Papa Ty had put me in charge of everything that he owned and over everything and gave me everything except for you talking about the wife. So when we read again, it said, and Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Come lie with me, man. <laughs> Everything that look good to you, baby, is not good for you. Okay. Let me tell you something. If we go to the footnote. It's saying, Papa Tar's wife failed to seduce Joseph, who, re who resisted this temptation by saying it would be a sin against God. He resisted sleeping with that woman. He rebuked her and said it was going to be a sin against God that he was not going to do it. Mm. A sin against God. Joseph didn't say, I'll be hurting you or I'll be sinning against Papa Tar. Or I be sinning against myself under pressure. Such excuses are easily rationalized away. Remember that sexual sin is not just between two consenting adults. It is an act of disobedience to God. Joseph avoided Papa Ty's wife as much as he possibly could. He refused her advances. He refused her flirting with him and all that. He refused it. And finally, he ran away from her. Sometimes we trying to avoid temptation is just not enough. It's just not enough. Some temptation is, is have a stronghold with it. Okay. 
So, and sometimes we must turn and run, especially when the temptations seem very strong, as it often is very strong, okay, such as sexual temptation. That's a bad thing now. So here we see from the beginning of Genesis uh, that God was with Joseph always, even when his own brothers conspired to kill him. But then they changed their mind and they decided uh, why? Because they didn't want Joseph's blood to be on their hand. So what did they do? They decided to sell him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They sold him as a slave to the Ishmaelites, the traders. They sold him to the traders. My God, that is so sad. Now, why would brothers sell their brothers? Why, why was jealousy? Why was there so much jealousy, so much rage and hate and who mischief going on? But we just see right here from the very beginning of time that God was with Joseph always, even when his, when his own brothers conspired against him, okay? He was always with him. Look, God was still with Joseph, Joseph's brothers, and man made him a slave. God did not make Joseph a slave. His brothers and man made him a slave. But God, guess what? God gave him favor, even in this scheme. God gave him favor. His brothers and man made him a slave. His brothers sold him to the Israelite traders, and the Israelite traders made him a slave, and not God. See, some t everything that is meant that the devil mean for our bad, God turn it around and mean it for our good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we have to run, run, run from temptation, from trials, from trouble, and focus on the mark, which is God, our present help in the time of need right now. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. So, even though his brother sold him as a slave, God gave Joseph favor uh even in, in this scheme they came up with against him, that forced, uh, that scheme that they forced on him because they forced him into slavery, okay? God's favor was with Joseph, hallelujah, in this slavery in a foreign land. He was with him. Wherever Joseph went, God was right there letting him know, I got your back. I got you. Hold on. Your help is on the way. It's right here. If you just be steadfast and stand still and faint not, your help is right here. So sometimes we too find ourselves uh, in the same predicament, being falsely accused. Some even uh, some people even have been thrown into uh, jail for somebody else crying for something that they did not do, didn't have nothing to do with. So we find ourselves in these same predicament. Remember the Bible said there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. But it's right here. It's right here where God takes our pain. Mm, mm, mm. He took Joseph's pain, took the slavery, and turned it into his purpose. Just like he take our pain and turned it into our purpose. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. When I was diagnosed with colon cancer, ooh, that was the scariest thing to me because I had a sister. My oldest sister was battling cancer. This is, look, she is a two-time, is it three? She might be a three-time cancer survivor. She's still alive. Right now, 67 years old. She's still alive. Cancer free. She go to dialysis because she's on dialysis, but she's alive. She's here. That's the only thing wrong with her. Her eyesight is 100% back like it was when she was a child. Man, I'm telling you, when she, when she uh, was diagnosed with cancer, 
She was have to have perms in her head and stuff. Her hair, look, her hair came out and baby, it came back. Look, just big black curly locks. Let me tell you something. God would take your pain, your pain, my pain, and he would turn all that pain into our purpose. You hear me? God got a purpose for each and every one of us. So I say that we need to put on the welfare, put on the warfare, the whole armor of God, because we go into warfare. And uh, we need to put on the warfare of God, peoples, and we need to run, 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 and do not look back. We need to run like Joseph did and don't look back. Look, the Bible said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. He didn't say that it wasn't going to form. He said it wasn't going to prosper. Joseph ran. He got caught. But look what God did for him in the end. Ha ha. Stay tuned. Listen. I say that we need to put on the warfare of God and run, run, run and not look back. We have to do as God told Lot and his family to run and don't look back lest you get caught in our mess. You don't want to get caught in your mess. He told Lot and his family to go, to depart, leave, run, and don't look back. But who looked back? The wife. And what happened to her? Turned to a big old box, pillow of salt. She just melted. So sometimes we got to run. And don't look back. Because if we look back, sometimes it causes us to get caught up in our mess. And we don't want to get caught up in our mess. So when there was no way, so when there was no way, no way for Joseph to be free, guess what? God blessed Joseph in the middle of his mess to be free. That's what God do for us. He bless us in the middle of our mess. It ain't no mess we can get in too hard for God. None. None. Okay? Now we begin to see the godliness in Joseph. Mm -hmm. In his integrity. In his wise choices that reflected his godly character. God had made him a wise man. He filled Joseph with wisdom. A lot of wisdom. He blessed Joseph in the middle of his mess. Dead in the middle of his mess. He blessed him. He favored him. He favored him. He did. Now, we begin to see the godliness in Joseph and in his integrity and his wise choices that reflected his godly character. Are your choices reflecting your character of God? Because remember, we are all created in God's image. We have been made one with God. One through the blood of Jesus. We are all one. Jesus, look, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is one. The Trinity, three, is one. We have been made one with God. Jesus opened up that door. He gave us salvation. He forgave us for our sins first, and he gave us salvation. Now we live under grace and mercy. We don't have to be caught up in our mess no more, okay? We don't have to. God uses our struggles. Just like Joseph. Just like he used Joseph's struggle to tell the story of his glory. God uses our struggles, our trials, our mess to tell his story. It's not about us. It's about God. All we have to do is be a faithful servant. That's all we have to do. And we are all servants. We servants to something. Whether you believe it or not, we are servants, hallelujah, Jesus, to something. Who are you a serve? Who are you serving? What master are you serving today? <laughs> okay, well, think about this. The only way that we can get juice out of from fruits, we have to squeeze them, right? 
In order to get juice from fruits, we have to squeeze them. Some fruits we just have to crack open and like a coconut and, and pull the juice out of. But in order to get a fruit, get juice from a fruit, we have to squeeze them. We, well, in order for us to scramble um, a chicken egg, what do we have to do? We got to crack that sucker open, right? We cannot scramble a chicken egg without cracking it open. I'm not talking about no eggs you go in there and stole no liquid egg. I'm talking about a chicken egg. You cannot cook that, crack that egg and scramble it unless you crack it. You can't scramble it unless you crack it. Okay? Yes, I said chicken eggs. Because as you know, we can go to the stores and buy liquid eggs, powder eggs that can also be scrambled. Yep, they can be scrambled, but it still ain't that chicken egg, that fresh chicken egg. Listen, do y'all get what I am saying? Do y'all truly get what I am saying? In order for God to get the glory out of our life, our life, sometimes God is going to have to squeeze the juice out of us. I'm going to say that again. In order for God to get the glory out of our life, sometimes he got to squeeze the juice out of us, people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he do. And God going to have to squeeze some of us huh, harder, a whole lot harder than the others, baby. Because some of us is some tough fruits. Okay? So listen, don't be afraid when you get in your mess, caught up in your mess, when troubles come your way. Don't be afraid, my friends, my family, my sisters and brothers in Christ, to run, 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 just like Joseph did. And don't look back. Please don't look back because I tell you today that there is some of God's glory coming your way. Yes, your way. So don't be afraid to hold on and to let God put the squeeze on you, baby. Don't be afraid to hold on and let God put the squeeze on you. I often tell people that I have been picked out to be picked on. I was caught up in my mess a long time ago when God snatched me out. And he made me a new creature in Christ. He cleaned me up. He squares the juice out of me. He made me whole. He sanctified my soul. And for that, I am grateful. Hallelujah. Sometimes, hallelujah, my God, we have to run, run, run from our mess. I had to run from my mess. I had to run from that liquor bottle. I had to run from them cigarettes. I had to run from fornication. I had to run because I was caught up in that mess. And that those um, those uh, sins had a hold on me, a stronghold. But today I stand and I decree, I declare, I rebuke, I destroy I break down, I tear down every stronghold that come up against me in the name of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is against every demon, every demonic spirit that tries to form against how you my God. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. That tries to form against me. I belong to God. My Alpha and my Omega, my beginning and my end. He is the head of my life. He is my first and my last. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I belong to God. I have power to bind, to rebuke, to destroy because I belong to God. I have been made one with God through Jesus Christ. And so have you. But look, the reality of God favor is that God will use every lie. He will use every fear. He will use every heartbreak, every heartbreak, the misuse against you, the abuse being talked about. Oh my God. 
when people look at us wrong, when people reject us, God, I'm talking about my father, God, he will take all of these and turn them into an opportunity for his glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Are you letting God use you? Hallelujah. Are you letting God use you? Come on now. When God give us victory, when God give us victory, can't nobody, and I mean nobody, nobody else can take that credit, baby. What's for you is for you. When God give you victory, can't nobody else take that credit. Nobody. Listen, the devil isn't satisfied until he kills our credibility. Come on. He not satisfied until he kills our credibility. The devil is not satisfied until he destroys our destiny. Because he is threatened, yes, mm -hmm. he is threatened. The devil is threatened by your potential, peoples. Look, he knows when God's hand is on your life. Satan knows when God's hand is on your life. He is not satisfied until he kills your credibility. Okay, he knows when God's hand is on your life. He knows that God have made a deposit in you or in your life. Yes, God make a deposit in us and in our life. We belong to God. And he make deposits in us. Hallelujah. The devil know that he can't take away what God has given you. He already know it. So listen. Let us not be ignorant because the devil knows that he can destroy you, knows that if he can destroy you before you discover your destiny, before you discover your identity in Christ. Come on now, let's roll this up together. One more time, let us not be ignorant because the devil knows that if he can destroy you before you discover your identity and your destiny, he knows that he has won the battle. See, the devil is not thinking about, this is deep. This was the message that the Lord gave me. The devil is not thinking about who we think we are. He ain't thinking about who we think, who we think we are, but he is intimidated. He is intimidated by our potential. Oh, yeah. Because, see, if we run, run, run and keep running, we can survive this season slash battles. Then he, talking about the devil, knows that we are victory bound. Do I need to say that again? See, the devil is not thinking about who we are, but he is intimidated by our potentials. Because if we run, 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 and keep on running, we can survive this season. We can, we can survive this season of stuff that we are going through, okay? And then the, the, the devil knows that we are victory-bound, people. Victory-bound. We're headed home now. So now we have to keep our mind right, people. We have to keep our mind right. We cannot let um we cannot let Satan destroy our potentials. We can't let him stop it. We cannot. So now we have to keep our mind right. If you uh it make me think about Isaiah 26 and uh three, where it says, God says he will keep us in perfect peace. Huh, whose mind stayed on him. God will keep us in perfect peace. Okay? That's why we have to keep our mind right. We can never avoid strife in this world around us, but with God, we can know perfect peace. There's a lot of strife going on in this world around us. We, can, we cannot avoid it. But God, But with God, 
Mm, mm, mm. We can know perfect peace, even in turmoil, in, our, in the midst of our troubles, in the midst of uh, being um, talked about, misused, and abused. Because when we are devoted to him, our attitude is, and it will be steady and stable. If we are devoted to God, oh my God, hallelujah, Jesus. If we are devoted to God, our attitude will be stable and it will be steady. I'm telling you this, guys. Take heed to this word. Listen, our real battle is our mind. It's our mind. That's why we have to keep our mind on the Lord. We must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to keep our mind on the Lord. Oh, my God. We all have something that have almost made us lose everything in our life at one point in time. And I, I really believe that. We all have something that we've been fighting against and with. Listen, there is no temptation, hallelujah, that has overtaken you. But for every temptation, God has provided us a way out, an escape. You hear me? There is no temptation that have overtaken us that God have not provided us an escape way out of. This is true. Listen, the devil's job is to make us look at something that's not great and think of it like it is great. That's his job. That's his job. He's deceptive. Okay? His job is to make us look at something that ain't great, that ain't good, that don't even look good, that don't taste good, and make us think that it is. That's him. So if something is fun, then the devil put the thought in our mind that it must be good. Yeah, that's we all have felt like that. Ooh, if it's going to be fun, I'm going to this party tonight. It wasn't good. That was flesh. Okay? Something is fun, then the devil put the thoughts in our mind that it must be good. And if it seems right, it must be pleasurable to us, huh? Uh, or thoughts like, if it don't hurt anyone, it must be fine, or it must be all right to do. I done had those thoughts, too. You remember that uh, saying, if it don't fit, don't force it. Just relax and let it go. They took that whole song out of content and made it a sex idol song. If it don't fit, don't force it. Just relax and let it go. Y'all remember just like I do. Yep, we all in this world. But look here. <laughs> run, run, run. And don't look back. Because if we look back, what? If we look back, if we look back, what if when we look back, it hurt God? What if it grieved God when we look back? I say today, run, 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 and keep on running, people, because God is the only one here and in heaven that knows what's good and what's bad. The Bible says that there is a way that seems right to man, but it's going to lead them to destruction. So the way that seems right to us is the way that leads us to destruction. So in my clothes, guys, let me share these words with you. This was just a message that the Lord had gave me. And I had brought this message at church, but I wanted to give it to you guys. So I'm just sharing it with you guys. There are some things that we must lay down, that we must give up. Because they may be appealing to us. They may be appealing to our eye, but it is poison to our spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
we better pick up this Bible. We better pick up this cross right here. Mm -mm -mm. And run. It's better for us to run because we may get what we want and lose what we have, which is our salvation. So I say again, run, run, run. Let's be like Joseph and not lose our integrity. We can't lose the favor of God. So this looks like a good time to run, run. I say we should be running for our life. We should be running to God for our life. We should be running to God. Unless you're going to lay your salvation down, we should be running for God. I say we should be running, 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 running for my life. Running, 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 running for my life. Put my shoes on the run. Running for my life. I'm going to run, run, run. I got my war clothes on and I won't look back. I got my war clothes on and I won't look back. I'm going to run, 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 because I'm running for my life. Let me run, 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 run. So listen, let us be like Joseph and not lose our integrity. We can't lose the favor of God. So this looks like a good time for us to run, run, run. I say we should be running for our life, people. Run because the devil wants to break you. Run because the devil wants to control you. Run because he wants to stop your destiny and your purpose. Hallelujah. Run, 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 saints. It's a trap. Run, don't look back. Run, because we only have one purpose, to live for God. And when we are waiting on God, it causes us to live a different life. So people, listen, run, 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 and don't look back. When we are waiting on God, it causes us to live a different life from peoples in the world. Um, from unsaved people. It causes us to live a different life from unsaved people. We're still in the world. We're still flesh. But it causes us to live a different life. Okay? And it causes us to run to greater treasures. Okay? In heaven. Because only what we do and get from God lasts forever. So again, I say to you guys, to everybody that watched this video, Run, run, run. The word of God is blessed. I say run, people. Run, run, run. We need to run just like Joseph. Run. I'm going to give you some scriptures to read. Genesis 39, 6 and 15 and 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9 and 24 right quick. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. Hallelujah. I love the word of God, guys. I love it. I love God. I, I'm just I'm just happy. First Corinthians, we're going to chapter, ninth chapter. The ninth chapter. These pages are so thin. I say that every time. First Corinthians 9.24. Listen. Listen to this. This is my closing scripture. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And many peoples run a race, but only one person receive that prize. I am running. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, God. I am running for a prize. My goal, my mark is heaven. I am running and I won't look back. If we read 
the footnotes, it explained to us winning a race requires purpose and discipline. Paul used this illustration to explain that the Christian life takes hard work. It is not easy to be a Christian. It is not easy to be saved. Running a race. We are trying to reach the higher calling, the mark of God. So we must be steadfast, faithful, huh, uh, stable, and unmovable. And stand on the word of God. We must be that light that sit up on the hill and that cannot be hid, peoples. Listen, Christian life takes hard work, self-denial, and grueling preparation. As Christians, we are running toward our heavenly reward. See, I'm running for my heavenly reward. The essentials, di uh, disciplines of prayer, Bible study, and worship equip us to run with vigor and stamina. Listen, we have to run with vigor and stamina. We got to run, run, run. We got to run like Joseph was running from Papa to his wife. And we got to run, run, run like Lot and his family did. But we cannot Look back. We got to catch hold to the plow and don't look back. Hallelujah. We got to stay focused on the word of God. We got to be steadfast and stable, unmovable. Hallelujah. On the word of God. So I tell you again in the name of Jesus to put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy because we are not fighting, fighting against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. This is a spiritual thing, baby. We fighting against principalities, demons, ha ha, rulers in high places. Hallelujah. Come on now. We have to put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. We got to pick up this cross, forsake all, and run, run, run. We got to run, people, and don't look back. We can't let the devil destroy our destiny. We can't let him take away our integrity. Salvation is ours, says Jesus. He made a way for us. He gave us an escape way out of our everything. Huh, my God, I thank you guys. I hope that you got something out of this. Read Genesis chapter 39, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and ask God to reveal the mysteries of his word to you. Hallelujah. Ask him that helped you to put on the whole arm of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can't nobody do us like God. Can't nobody do us like God, I said. I want you to know can't nobody do you like God. Hallelujah. God will do you just like he did Joseph. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. But God took his pain. And he turned that thing around for his purpose. And God will take your pain. And he'll turn it around for your purpose. Thank you guys for watching. But I say again as I exit this platform. Run, run, run. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. And don't look back. Run. Run, thank you, Jesus. Run, run, run. Glory to God. Run and don't look back. I love you all. Happy Friday. God bless. Stay safe. Stay prayed up. Listen, y'all. You know they got some new quarters out. The old quarters, the head used to face where it say, in God we trust. Look it up. The new quarters, the head is turned away, is facing the opposite sign of God and trust. In God of God and trust. The head done turned his back.
on God. In God we trust. Check it out for yourself. Peace. I love you all. God bless. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Subscribe, like, share. Thumbs up this video. I love you guys. Hallelujah. Mm. Look, I couldn't close this video out without saying, singing my song one time. I know God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know God is a good God. Yes, he's here. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. I know God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know God is a good God. Yes, he's my everything. <laughs> I love that song. I love that song and I love this song. Oh, come, let us magnify the Lord. For he, oh, come, let us magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Bye, guys. I love you. God bless.